the Band Geek. I am Richie Castellano. Today, I'm going to talk about a new live streaming show that I'm doing, and it looks a little bit like this. Have become comfortably numb. So that video was taken from a show I did last night. I'm recording this today on Thursday. Last night was Wednesday. And um, this is a show that I've, I've been working on for quite some time. I've actually been working on this for four months, getting prepared for this. And uh, I'm going to tell you all about it, why I'm doing it, what inspired me to do it, and how I'm doing it. But before we do that, I want to take care of some business. If you like what Band Geek does and you want to see even more fun stuff, you can you can support us using our tip jar. That's richiecastellano.com slash tip jar. And that brings you to a PayPal form from our partner site, Streamlabs. And don't worry, it's totally safe. And that goes to supporting the show. Uh, if you use Amazon, you can support the show just by doing your normal shopping. Go to riotcast.com slash bandgeek and hit the Amazon banner at the top of the page. And uh, you click that before you do your shopping. And then once you check out, a small percentage of your purchase will go to supporting the show. And it doesn't cost you anything extra. And it's a beautiful thing. And please think of us during holiday shopping season because every little bit really helps the show immensely. So thank you guys for doing that. And to those of you who have been you know, continuing to do that all along, we really appreciate that. So now, um, oh, while I'm at it, I just revamped my website. So now uh, you can go to richiecastellano.com and my website will no longer look like it was made during the 90s, which is really nice. So check that out too. And uh, if you see any mistakes, let me know because I just finished it. So this live streaming thing, what is it? Well, I'm a gamer and I, I, uh, or I should say game fan because gamers are usually good at playing video games. I'm horrible at video games, but I enjoy them. I enjoy the technology behind them and I really enjoy watching people who are great at them play. And um, <clears throat> for me, uh, I found the site Twitch TV to be really great because I could watch people play games. And not only is it entertaining, but also if you're someone who's thinking about buying a game, uh, you can go watch someone play it for like a half hour and see if that would be for you. So I think Twitch is a really cool service. And for some of the Band Geek viewers, if you remember, uh, when we first started doing live streams, we did them on Twitch. Uh, eventually, we moved over to YouTube because I have a bigger subscriber base on YouTube and it made more sense for us, but I still enjoy Twitch. Um, aside from watching games, I've been seeing a lot of people do music on Twitch, and um, there's one person I have to give credit to because uh, I'm sort of you know, borrowing some of his ideas. It's a guy called Scene of Action Music. Uh, you can find him on Twitch. It's phenomenal, the, the work he does. I'm very impressed by him. I'm a big fan of his. And uh, he writes some really great music, too. So check that out. But uh, I've watched him, and I watched a few other people do a um, <clears throat> like a playlist thing where they say, okay, here are the songs we know you can pick from this playlist, and we'll do a cover. And some of them say, okay, if you tip us, we'll do this song. So I, I took little elements from all these Twitch streamers who are doing music, and I sort of jumbled them up to make my own thing. And that's what this Twitch show is. Uh, and the timing's pretty good because I've been uh, gearing up for this month, particularly for um, December, because that's when uh, Blue Oyster Cult has a little bit of a break. So I want to fill up that break. I, I don't want to not play for a month and a half. I want to play. So I'm filling it up, playing shows from here, from my studio, which is really awesome because, you know, instead of just playing for the people who live within like, you know, a 20 mile radius of me, I can play to anybody in the world who wants to watch. Very cool. And thanks to the technology of the internet and certain services, I can chat with everybody while I'm doing it. It's very cool. So what we normally do on Band Geek is we'll do the Encore thing for the live stream. And if you haven't seen Encore, what that is, it's a game where you um, you take a, uh, a word like, I don't know, uh, phone, right? And you have to sing a song with the word phone in it. So that's how that works. And th a game like that and a show like that, we're sort of doing stuff off the top of our heads, stuff that we're not really prepared to play. And it's a lot of fun. But I wanted to do a show where everything was rehearsed and, you know, prearranged. So I figured having a set list of tunes that I was prepared to do 
with tracks, with sequences, well, I'll get to that in a minute, uh, was a different experience for the people who watch Band Geek stuff on streaming. So that's what I'm doing with this. It's a, it's a, uh, a prearranged, rehearsed sort of thing. So it started with a song list, and now I have a very large song list of tunes I want to get to, but I had to be realistic about it. So I decided, okay, let me start with 20 songs. Let me try to have 20 songs ready for the uh, initial stream, which was, like I said, last night, and I called it the Super Secret Live Stream Beta Test. And uh, so I, have 20, I had 20 songs, and I had a whole bunch of things. I had stuff going from, like, <clears throat> Little River Band, Squeeze, uh, Blue Oyster Cult, Metallica, Stevie Wonder, you know, just a bunch of different diverse sort of tunes from uh, a whole slew of artists. And um, the first step I did to do this was make backing tracks. So let's take a look at one of those. All right, so this is my Pro Tool session. The song we're going to look at today is Signed, Sealed, Delivered, I'm Yours by Stevie Wonder. So the first thing I do is I figure out the tempo I want to do it in. Uh, so I picked 110. Uh, then I will program the drums. So here's my drum part. Now, um, the drums I actually mostly play on the keyboard. So for example, so I'll be like, you know, let's see if I can show you this. Move the camera down for a second. There we go. So that's the idea with that. Um, you know, I don't actually play on the kit. I guess maybe I'm too lazy, but I'm, I'm, I'm sort of okay as a keyboard drummer. So anyway, back to the session. So I'll do that. And then I'll add some of the percussion. Oh, let me tell you where the drum sounds are coming from. Uh, for stuff like this, I'll usually use contact. And I'm using the Abbey Road Drummer. Uh, there's a lot of different sorts of eras of kits in Abbey Road Drummer, so this was a good plugin to use for me. This is in the Contact Player, and so I have now my drums, my percussion. Right. Okay. So uh, next, I'll add some bass. And uh, at this point, after I added the bass, I'd probably play guitar. But what I ended up doing was leaving spots out for parts for me to play during the live show. So um, then I moved on to some of the other stuff, like uh, there's a sitar in the intro. So let's get to that. And that's coming from the Variax. And then I did add some guitar just for support under the solo, because here's the solo in the song, so you hear the guitar kick in. And then I figured out some horn parts, so here's a fun Barry sound. <laughs> So now uh, in the track, it sounds pretty cool. Whoops, sorry. And then I added the rest of the horns. So um, this is a great plugin called uh, Session Horns in Contact that I love. Great, great sounding horns. Those are the best fake horns I've ever heard. Uh, okay, and then I uh, did some background vocals here. 
um, trying to sing like women, which was pretty fun. Let me, uh, so this, just so you can hear them one at a time. I never knew that was the part. I had been singing something totally different, but I actually like listened to the track and tried to figure out, you know, what the right thing was. So uh, I think I doubled that. Ooh, baby, here I am, sound sail delivered, I'm yours. And then the next part. Ooh, baby, here I am, sound sail delivered, I'm yours. And then I added uh, like one part from my vocal because thinking that I was going to sing the lead one and then this would be the double just so there's two voices on each part so all together here's the harmony Ooh, baby, here I am, sound sealed, delivered, I'm yours. pretty cool pretty cool stuff and then um it feels like this yeah thing I want to show you Ooh, baby. Ooh, 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 ooh. there it is and baby here I am Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, here's the whole mix together. So obviously there's no guitar, there's no lead vocal, because that's for me to do. Okay, so now let's take a look at the next step. A common thing that I've been seeing a lot of on live performances and on, you know, video performances is uh, the use of video effects and video screens and stuff. And, you know, I, I love that stuff. So I really wanted to get in on that and, and have some sort of video component other than just me. So um, the next thing I did was I added some visual effects. And the program I'm using for this, it's like a screensaver program called Plane 9. And um, they have all these interesting little... Uh, video effects and textures and whatever and they react to the music some of them do they react to the music so what i did was i recorded using obs which i wish i could show you but i can't show you obs on this because i'm using obs to actually record this video right now um <clears throat> using that i recorded the video uh screensaver material on top of the audio and then i brought it into Sony Vegas next. Oh, sorry. Now it's called Magix Vegas. Uh, that's right. I just upgraded to Vegas 15, and it's Sony Vegas is now owned by a company called Magix. Great company. I just got the upgrade. It's awesome, and I'll show you what I did in there. Let's take a look at my Vegas file. So here's Vegas. And what I did was I imported all of the video files and the audio mixes. I synced them up. And then I added some titles. So at the beginning of each one, we have some titles here. There you go. My count comes in. And then... And you see how it pulses with the music? So that's basically all I did. Also, another thing, um, because I wanted to have... The, uh, the visuals show up on this screen over here behind me. What I did was I shut the lights off, I webcammed the screen, and then I used the brightness and contrast inside of Vegas to make sure that this looked okay. You know, to make because uh, sometimes uh, when you're using webcams, screens can become overblown. So I actually dimmed down. I, I had to do this for all the videos. I had to dim down all of the visuals to make sure they showed up the right way and didn't blow out the brightness of the entire screen. So it was a process, but you know, I did this for all the tunes. Um, let me show you Plane 9. This is the Plane 9 website. I just wanted to give this guy props because he does great stuff. His name is, I think, Joaquim Dahl. And if you want to experiment with stuff like this, you can go to plane9.com. Uh, very cool website, very cool stuff. Just wanted to give him a little plug. So ideally, the piece of software I'd probably want to use for playback and to do all the stuff I'm trying to do is something like Ableton Live, but I don't have Ableton Live, and I was entertaining buying it, and that might happen, but I figured just to get this thing started, it might be a better idea just to 
try to do it with what I have. And then if it becomes something I do regularly, then I can invest into it. But to just get started, my goal was to be able to do this sort of project with just stuff I had in the studio already. So the next step I did was bring the video files into Pro Tools. So, and because Pro Tools, uh, the way I have it, only supports one video file per session, every single song needs its own session. So here is my Pro Tools session. Let me move that down. There we go. Um, so here's the video file up here. Um, and as you can see, it'll play. Wait, I just hit it like a dummy. There we go. There it is. Okay, but there's some other things going on. So the next step that I did was I programmed sounds for every single song into the Helix. And I got and I was thinking of I was thinking of doing it a few different ways. I was thinking of having, you know, a few sounds that really covered a lot of different ground and then doing, you know, the foot switch thing while I was playing. But then I thought, I'm gonna be reading comments, I'm gonna be you know, trying to perform and worrying about the stream and watching the cameras and doing all this stuff. Do I really want to worry about, you know, changing presets and stuff like that? So I was watching, I think, a video with a, a rig rundown video with Brian May where he was saying that his tech sometimes will change his sounds for him. And I said, wouldn't that be cool if I had a tech? But then I thought, well, since Pro Tools is already playing back the video file... I can use that to send patch changes to the Helix. So, to the Helix! All right, look at this split screen action we got going on here. Oh yeah, okay, so here is the Helix track. And let me show you guys what's happening here with this Helix track. So, over here, I have a program change. So, hold on, I'm going to change the Helix right now into just something else, right? Yeah, say new preset, great, right? And then if I go back to the beginning of this track, I just press play, look what happens. Oh, isn't that cool? All right, so I have a MIDI track going, or MIDI uh, cable going from my interface out into the Helix, telling it, okay, change patches. Now this is a pretty simple one. I don't have a lot of patch changes, but if you look over here, you see how I have on under this track, under this Helix track, I have a bunch of control changes. So look what happens to um, these effects while the uh, track is going on. There we go, ready? Notice that? See how it changed? So I'll, I'll zoom in so you can see this again. So it's sort of it's it's sort of like a snapshot where um I have sounds effects changes going on within a patch instead of just keeping the switch the patches cuz I didn't want to have <clears throat> I didn't want to have like five patches per song. I wanted to have one or two patches per song and just turn things on and off. Now, a cool thing about this patch is if you notice right there, I have an effects loop I'm using, let me see if I can show you what this, look at this awesome camera move right here. Uh, I have a JHS Andy Timmons pedal right in there if I ever want to use like some extra distortion for anything. So that's what's going on there. So that's how the Helix is involved with this. I basically worked my best to make new sounds for almost every single song. I reused a few, but... All of them are tweaked. I have all the effects timed right, all the delays, the reverbs. Everything is custom for the particular song I'm doing. So the next thing I did was to automate the lights. So let's take a look at that. This is a cheapo little RGB LED Parkan light that I got or that my wife got me from eBay or something. It's not great, but it's fun for tinkering if you're you know sort of semi-interested in DMX lighting and it has the two DMX XLR connectors in the back. Um, for this to work, you're going to need an interface. And I got this thing. It's the Entech Open uh, DMX USB connector. 
It's not cheap. You can actually make one. Like uh, me and my cousin Phil have made a couple of them. You can make them for cheaper. Um, but I this is the first one I bought, and I, I made two more. Now, you might be asking, I thought you said you're just doing this with stuff you had lying around the house. Yes, I had this lying around the house. Uh, I actually used this uh, for playing the game Artemis because Artemis has DMX lighting cues built into the game. So I, got, I bought this for a video game. Anyway, and here's the 5-pin um, to 3-pin adapter. You, you're not really supposed to plug this right in. You use an XLR cable in between these, but just for a short run, I'm going to show you. So um, the program I use to control this is called Freestyler X2, and that's this. And I set up a new light here, and then as you can see, if I click on it, I can control the light. So using this program, I can control the different colors, and what I actually ended up doing, and I'll show you this, because this is, well to me it's interesting, it might not be interesting to you. Um, I went to the setup, and I did um, external control, MIDI control, and I'm using it with my uh, MIDI interface, and I set up key. Com uh, I'm sorry, uh, MIDI controls. So I want uh, controller, whatever this is, one to control the shutter. I want controller two to control red. Controller three to control green. Controller four to control blue. That's how I did it. I assigned them in here. So then, we'll minimize this. Going back to Pro Tools, I made a lighting track. So here is the shutter. Here is Sorry, here's a shutter. Here's a red, green, blue. So if you look at the beginning of the session, so you'll watch these lines for changes and see if it corresponds with the light. Here we go. We should have a red swell coming up soon. Right, cool. So I made the lighting program for each song, which took a pretty long time. As you can see, uh, there's a bit of lighting automation here. I have some something crazy going on here. Let's do that. Oh, I think I have a strobe light over here. So I did that for the tune. With that done, the next thing I wanted to control were the cameras. Now, I might have a hard time showing you this, so maybe I'll record this next part with my phone just to, just to be able to show you what I did. So this is a program called OBS, which is one I love and I use a lot of. And um, I'm sh filming this with my camera because I usually use this to do webcam stuff like the, like the show. But if you look here, I have all these different scenes. So I have my standby scene. I have my chat scene, which is uh, that camera up there. I have my face scene, which is this camera. And I have, also my guitar scene. I have a face scene, which is not pointed at anything right now. I have a, an overlay one, so you can sort of see Pro Tools and like a see, a see through one. So these are my scenes. Uh, so changing them, what I actually wanted to do was I wanted to be able to change these with Pro Tools. So the way I achieved that was I went to the settings here, and then I went to hotkeys, and every single scene has a hotkey. Every like so when you want to switch to it. But that was only half of the puzzle. This is a program called Bohm's MIDI Translator Classic. And um, what you do with this is you tell it when you receive certain MIDI notes, I want you to retransmit them as keystrokes. So this is something I have to keep on in the background. So, oh, hey, Band Geek. So uh, if I put, if I leave this on, and I put back on uh, Pro Tools, now if you'll see, there's a camera track here where I just have notes on the piano roll here. Uh, and these notes represent different camera angles. So like, I know my C note is the chat screen. Uh, D is the video overlay. E is the video overlay with some uh, op some like opacity see-through sort of thing. F is my face and G is the guitar. So um, while I'm playing this, if you'll notice here, 
Does see MIDI in is blinking? It'll blink in a second. There you go. So that means it's receiving MIDI data, okay? So let me go back to the uh, phone camera to show you what it's doing. Okay, I'm filming myself again. So here is that camera track, right? So I'll go back to the beginning here. I'll play that and I'll bring OBS back on the top so you can see it now. It's going to change the camera angles automatically. So the idea here is one camera will go like on the full head and guitar, the other camera will be like a guitar close up just so I can have some variety there and then Pro Tools will switch those two. So that was very appealing to me. It's sort of wonky, you have to keep OBS on the top. Uh, I know I keep mentioning OBS, OBS is a very very powerful piece of software. Uh, it's one of the coolest pieces of software I, I own and it's free. Uh, it's called, it's Open Broadcaster or Broadcasting Software. Uh, I think everybody should have it because not only does it allow you to stream, but you can do screen captures and, and webcam recording. It's very powerful and that's what I use almost every day. I, I absolutely love that program. You should definitely check it out. So now uh, the other challenges were to actually compose or, or bring up the uh, the overlay that you saw. So... Another service that I really like is something called Restream, and that's what we use to go from, uh, we broadcast to like Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube at the same time. Uh, Facebook is a little wonky with live streaming. I'm sure those of you who have tried to do Facebook Live, you've realized this. So um, I'm not doing this particular uh, series of shows on Facebook just because it doesn't work reliably, uh, at least not as reliably as YouTube and Twitch, so that's why it'll only be on that. But uh, let me show you what Restream looks like. It's very cool. So this is Restream. Uh, it's a website, and um, I it's a subscription that we pay for, and I have it set up for Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. And we can change the titles here, and we can broadcast to all three. But what's even more impressive, and that's something I just sort of figured out, was that Restream also has a, a chat app that is really powerful. Let me pull that up right now. So Restream Chat will bring YouTube and Twitch chat together in one place so I can read one stream instead of having to go back and forth between two different sites. Uh, it doesn't work for Facebook yet, but I believe that's coming soon, which will be great. Um, but the, the cool thing is we can embed the chat into the stream. So let's see if we can test that. Okay, here's what my chat window looks like again. And as you'll notice in the bottom uh, there, You'll see it says Restream IO chat is ready to display messages. So I'm on my YouTube right now, and I can write uh, YouTube test, and in a few seconds that'll pop up. There it is, right there. And then I can go over to my Twitch, and I can type Twitch test, and that'll pop up. And if I was so inclined to, I can use the chat app, and I can reply and say Hey guys, and it'll pop up uh, on everything. So that's that's how I'm handling the chat. So the last thing I did was I, I wanted some sort of vocal effects. So um, <clears throat> I was thinking about programming them in Pro Tools and having like time delays and stuff like that for the voice, but I kind of ran out of time to do that and I had to get it done quick and, and dirty. So I ended up using this, my old TC Electronic Nova system. This was what I used for guitar effects for years with Blue Oyster Cult uh, before I started, I switched over to the Line 6 stuff. Um, this is a great unit. I switched to Line 6 because the Line 6 stuff does modeling and it's like an all-in-one solution so I can basically plug into the Helix and go right to the PA system and not have to worry about it anymore. Whereas this, you need to use an amplifier with it. Um, so b before when I was using rental Mesa Boogies or I was using my Angle, um, I would use this just for effects. Um, there's nothing wrong with this piece. This is a great piece. The effects are really high quality in here. So what I ended up doing was plug my mic into a preamp, I have a nice tube preamp, and took the output of that into here and programmed some reverb and delays and compression for my voice. So um, I could actually control 
what effects I wanted to use on my voice during the show. So the only toe tapping I really had to do was for the vocals. And, you know, a few times, if for those of you who watched the um, Super Secret live stream, uh, I forgot to turn the vocal, the uh, delays on and off. That's something I'm going to have to practice. Uh, I've also ordered a new microphone because I didn't think the um, dynamic mic I used cut it for that. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to do little things to, to improve it here or there. So um, that was really the last piece of the puzzle. The only drag about the test stream last night was that the lights didn't work. Like, they worked for, like, a minute, and they stopped working. So that's something I'll have to uh, look into. And, you know, it was a learning process, and I'll be tweaking it. But um, look out for it. I'll be doing it again on Wednesday night. What's the date is for that? Uh, Wednesday, December 6th, I'll be doing another show, and then the following Wednesday, and hopefully the following Wednesday until people get tired of watching it. And I'm going to keep trying to add songs. I have a bunch of songs recorded. I just have to do the... Uh, programming because as you can see there's a lot of programming to do i have to make the helix sounds then i have to do the lights the cameras and it's you know it, it takes a little while that's all but it's it's fun it's great to do and i thought the show last night was a blast and i really appreciate everybody who came down and offered some helpful criticism and hung out with me that was really cool guys so uh if you missed it i'm going to end this episode with one of the tunes from last night with uh something i just like screen captured from the live stream uh, I won't be making those available in full for download because I really want the live streams to be something that you have to experience live and that you participate in. Uh, I might make a few, a few songs here or there available, but I probably won't. And uh, you'll notice that I'm a little... This is the first song from the stream last night, and I'm a little distracted because I'm stepping on things. I'm trying to read the chat. I had the chat like on my phone next to me. I, I had a lot of things going on, but... I think, I think it came out pretty good, and it'll give you an indication of what the show is like, and I hope I can see you guys on the web soon, and I hope you'll uh, you'll join me and hang out with me and request some tunes, and it's, it's fun. I think you'll like it. So uh, that's it for this behind-the-scenes episode on my live streaming gig. This is what I've been up to for the last four months, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope, you, uh, I hope to see you out there on one of the live streams. Thanks for watching. I'm going to do like a little warm-up tune right now to make sure everything is indeed working. So basically... The idea is uh, the idea is that I'm doing like a gig because I'm. If you guys look at the BOC schedule, I'm off for a month, so I'm going to be doing these gigs hopefully once a week. Um, setting this up right now was kind of harrowing because there were you know, nothing worked. But I literally have every piece of gear I own hooked up right now, and every piece of software. I have like eight apps running on the computer. I have iPads and phones. So um, yeah. I want to do like a little gig tonight, and this is like a private gig for you guys, and so we're just hanging out, and let's have a good time. All right. Wish me luck. Song number one. <laughs>